Good morning, everybody. It is good to be with you this morning. I hope you're all enjoying this week and the some little bit of rain, but it is good to be with you as it always is on a Sunday morning. I invite you all to stand as you're able so we can begin our service this morning. of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
unspeakable love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from Job. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is it that the dark darkened counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man, and I will question you, and you shall not declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have, have understanding, who determined the measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together, and all of the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut, the, who shut in the sky with the doors? When it burst out from the womb? When I make the clouds its garment, and thick darkness in swaddling band? and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors. I said, thus far shall you come, and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord.
reading from 2 Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have committed ourselves in every way through great endurance in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left. In honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, <clears throat> excuse me, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet we are well known, as dying and see, we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet possessing everything. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord.
On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion, and they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. What a story, what a story we hear this morning of this apostle saying to Jesus, he says, let's go to the other side. They say, sure, they get in the boat and off they go. And as they're traveling, a windstorm comes in. I'm not a sailor, I'm not normally on boats, so I don't have that kind of experience. But the disciples did. The disciples, the apostles, were fishermen. The people knew boats, they knew water, they knew storms. And so a lot of us have heard this story many times. And so I want to emphasize some points that I sometimes forget about that I think will help us a little as we talk about the gospel this morning and how it can help us in today's, in our, in our day-to-day lives. So one thing about the boat that they get on, often, I don't know about you, but when I think about Jesus in a boat, I think about a little boat, like a tub boat. I just think of him in this little bitty boat with people, how he gets that many people in, I, I just, it doesn't make sense now, I think I know as, as I say this, but I've always thought about it in a little boat. But I have seen models of what these commercial fishermen's boats were in this area at this time. And let me tell you, they're not small. They're industrial commercial fishing boats because that is what they were. They weren't fishing for tonight's dinner. They were fishing to sell. These were, that was their business. And so they had big boats. The other thing to remember is that these were people who knew boating, who knew how to navigate the water. Jesus, on the other hand, really wasn't, right? He was called a carpenter, a masonry, right? So this was not kind of his thing. So it's interesting that they, he's in there in the boat, and so they, he's left them to do their thing. And I raise these points because I want you to remember that when the disciples are scared and they're worried about the storm, they have reason to be. It's not just somebody like me who doesn't know the water and any little bit of wind just kind of scares me, right? No. These people know to be afraid. Something is going very, very wrong in this trip. They are about to sink, right? The other thing I want you to pay to, to, to note to is that Jesus is asleep, but when the disciples go to Jesus, what does Jesus say? They go to him and they say, Aren't, don't you care we are perishing? Right? That's what they, they say to him. What does he say to them? Does he, huh? Yes, have you no faith? But he does something first, right? But the interesting thing is what he doesn't say. He says, be still to the waters and to the wind. And he says to them, have you no faith? Why are you afraid? Why are you afraid? He doesn't say, why did you wake me up? 
He doesn't say, why are you bothering me? I was having a grand old time. Too bad you're afraid. I know I'm not afraid, right? He doesn't say that. And I want us to pay attention to what he doesn't say as much as to what he does say because this is important. He is asking us to have more faith in him. He is asking us not to panic. But he is also inviting us to call on him when we are. As I've said, I don't, I'm not normally in boats. I'm not normally in storms in the water. But I've lived long enough in my life to be in other kinds of storms. When I feel like things are coming at me from all sides and I don't know what to do about it, and I'm terrified that I'm sinking. Can you relate? Have you been in those moments in your life when you were saying, I'm sinking? Yes. yes. And so the question that I have for you is what have you done when you feel that way? Because there's multiple things that I have done and multiple ways that I've responded. There are times when I want to go down to the bottom of the boat, hide, and say, maybe if I don't think about it, the storm will pass. Because I don't, I'm too afraid to tell anybody, to ask for help, and I just want it to go away. There are times when I responded by saying, I got this. I'm gonna, you know, pull up my boots, put on my girl, big girl pants, and I'm just gonna take care of this because you know, that's just how we do things. We don't, no victims here, we'll take care of this. But let me tell you, the best times and the ones that have the best results is when I say, Jesus, can't you see I'm sinking? Wake up, where are you? I don't care you're not a sailor, but I know you can get this too. And I think that's the lesson for today. When we are in storms, when we are in troubled waters, we have Jesus to turn to. And yes, ideally, I won't panic. Ideally, I won't be afraid. Ideally, I'm just like, okay. Jesus got this, I'm gonna call him in. It's a, but I'm telling you, I there's and I'll share with you, and I'll share with you that it just happened this week. Earlier in the week, we were hearing about the air conditioner and how we may have to turn around on a dime and fix this without a whole lot of time to spare. Which is never a good thing, right? When you just gotta do everything really quickly because things could go awry. I was visiting with the treasurers and the finance committee and we were looking at our finances and we were realizing we're actually really month to month. We're on our month, we're doing this month to month. Getting what, what money comes in is going out, month to month, right? And I'm like, oh, what is happening to St. John's? What is happening to us? You know, we're... And I'm like, oh, we're in the boat. Oh, there is a storm. Yes, I am afraid. And, and we got Jesus. And we can turn to Jesus and say, Jesus, help us, guide us, lead us out of this storm. Still the waters, still our hearts. Don't let us flounder out here by ourselves. Because if I think back at the multiple times I've been in these storms, when I have turned to Jesus, 
when I have asked for help. Jesus has never disappointed. Jesus has always been faithful. Jesus will always show up. And so I invite you in your life, if you're dealing with illnesses, if you're dealing with financial troubles, if you're dealing with broken relationships, if you're worried about the conditions of the waking up and seeing those natural storms and those political storms, and worried about the debate this week, whatever may be stirring in you fear and anxiety and concern, turn to Jesus. Ask Jesus to still the storms. Because I know that Jesus will not disappoint. And Jesus will calm the storms and make all things right. Amen. Amen. I invite you all to stand as you're able. And let us use the words of the Nicene Creed to reaffirm our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. Came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and the world. God of love, we pray for your church, for all the lay and ordained ministers, and for all who seek you in the community of the faithful. Equip us with compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, hear our prayers. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed, for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and the oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave it to our children's children, the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us. God of justice, 
God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighbors and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. God of peace. God of mercy. We pray for all in any kind of need or trouble. For those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family. For refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light, God of grace. At this time, we want to lift up special prayers of thanksgiving and petitions. First, we have had rain, and unfortunately in Austin, there has not been a lot of uh, damage in our community, so we are grateful for that. But we do pray for those communities who have had it harder, and so we want to pray for them. We also recognize that we continue to live in a war that's filled with war and violence, even among um, nations with one another that had been at peace and so we want to pray for peace among the nations and i uh, invite you to join me with the, for the prayer of peace among the nations almighty god our heavenly father guide the nations of the world into the way of justice and truth and establish among them that peace which is the fruit of righteousness that they may become the, come the kingdom of our lord and savior jesus christ amen we want to pray for um, healing and guidance for Karen, Frank, Doug, Gabrielle, Sandra, Carl, Bob, Bobby, Renee, and Sammy. Are there any on Zoom? Are there any other names that we want to lift up together? Stephen. We also pray and remember and pray for all our loved ones for whom the daughters of the king are praying for. We have uh, some upcoming weddings, and so we pray for the bride and groom, or the groom and bride, Shay and Chris, Brenda and Emmanuel. We also um, pray for those who have died from our community, Helen and Danielle. Anybody else that we want to lift up? And so we know that there are place people in our heart and in our community that we may not know about. And so let us pray together for strength and confidence for all those who we may not, who would, we want to lift up. Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, comfort and relieve your sick servants, and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs that they may be strengthened in their weakness and have confidence in your love and care. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We have some birthdays and we have some anniversaries. So if you want to join us up here so we can say the prayer of, of anniversaries and prayers of uh, birthdays, join us up here. And let me just tell you, there have been Sundays where we've named people and they weren't here and they've missed or whatever. So if you uh, have had a birthday from January through June, we're just going to celebrate you and recognize you. If you had an anniversary and you haven't had your blessing, come on up now as well. Let us start off with birthdays. And it's 
again, it's in your um, sheet. If you don't have a sheet, turn to page 830 in your Book of Common Prayer, and you'll find it there as well. Oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, we thank you for Nancy, for Philip, for their gifts and their willingness to share their gifts and for their great generosity to this community and to beyond. Continue to guide them and to protect them and to give them many years of joy. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with them and remain with them always. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. And we have um, newlyweds, right? <laughs> Join us. Prayer for anniversary. Most gracious God, we pray for you for tender mercy and unfailing care revealed to us in Jesus Christ and for the great joy and comfort bestowed upon us and the gift of human love. We give thanks to you for Kay and Wayne and the coming into faithfulness they have made. Pour out the abundance of your Holy Spirit upon them. Keep them in your steadfast love. Protect them from all danger. Fill them with your wisdom and peace. Lead them in holy service to each other and the world. Amen. May they continue to make music together at church and beyond and continue to share with one another their love and that that may be a reflection of your love to them and to us. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, be with them, and remain with them always. Amen. join us in this mission of St. John's. And so let's pray together for growing our congregation that we may be faithful to the mission of your work. Lord God, help us to be a welcoming place for visitors and prospective members. Help us to grow and serve your people here and in our broader community. Grant us grace to be the church you mean for us to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear our prayers, holy God, breathe your spirit over us and all the earth, that barriers would crumble and division cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love, and the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
big team. All of this information is in your e-newsletter or in the bulletin or both. So just keep an eye out. But I want to highlight a couple of things. One is if you know anybody who needs information or needs to be able to respond appropriately um, under SB4, it's an immigration law that was passed last legislative session that can um, ask questions of people who may be suspiciously have entered into Texas illegally. So if you know people or you yourself would want more information, join us today uh, at 2.30 right after the 1 o'clock service. We also have our third session. We had a series of three conversations. This is our third one, our final one for this round around the parish hall. If you have a particular interest of how, what we use the parish hall for, if you have an idea you want to share with us, there will be a meeting at 7.30 on Thursday via Zoom only to talk about the parish hall and how we would like to see it rebuilt. 9.30, we want to get, if you want to join us for our final event of our celebration of Juneteenth, we spent June doing a lot of uh, 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 paying attention to the African American experience within our church and our community. We're closing off that series, very excited. We had great movie night on Wednesday, but this Saturday we're gonna finish our, um, we're gonna finish our series by going to the Capitol grounds and we're gonna visit the African American memo Memorial Monument that is there. It is amazing. If you've never been, come with us. There'll be a short service, an opportunity for us to be together and to celebrate um, the, the accomplishments and the contributions of our African Americans brothers and sisters. So that will be this Saturday at 9.30 here, or we'll meet at the Capitol, and we'll start around 10.15ish. Um, the other thing is next Sunday is Polly Murray's feast day. We're celebrating the feast day of Polly Murray next Sunday, the 30th, and we're gonna kick it off by having a Christian formation where we're having a seminarian from uh, SSW who's a beneficiary of the Polly Murray Scholarship. And so that way you can hear from them how it benefits back to the community of St. Uh, Southwest, but particularly the recipients of these scholarships. And then next Sunday we'll do a uh, uh, special uh, offering for the Polly Murray Scholarship. So if you want to know more about the scholarship, that's, that's next Sunday at 945. Um, opportunity for us to be um, to for generosity again never panicking but always remembering our blessings is our fan drive you have been experiencing both in here and as you walk around how hot it has been this summer already very early and so there are people in our community who really could benefit from at least some circulation in their homes and so uh, the Daughters of the King are doing their annual fan, fan drive. You can put that in the bin, you can do that um, online. Just make note that this is for the fan drive. Um, and then wanted just to highlight and recognize, um, Patricia Mata was recognized at the Leaders, uh, Day Leaders Con Latino Conference last, uh, last weekend, as well as uh, we had a group of people going out there. So if you see Patricia, congratulate, congratulate her, because that was very fun of the work she's done here at St. John. So that's great. I think that is the main thing, but I do want to just take a second, because I mentioned something at the sermon, and I don't want people to go out and also be like me and think that the sky is falling. So here's the situation. We are running month to month. And so it is very important that if you give month to month, that you continue to give your monthly pledge month to month throughout the summer, because there'll be a real disconnect if that doesn't happen. So I encourage and invite you to those of you, thank you those who have been faithful to not stopping your pledges or kind of stopping and going, but if you are pledgers, to continue to do that as you've said. If you're a weekly pledger, a monthly pledger, however you've said it, if you can honor that, that's gonna be very helpful for us to continue to, um, as, as money comes in, money will go out, but as long as there's enough money coming in, it doesn't really matter, right? The other thing, if you've never pledged, you haven't pledged, 
Um, and I just invite you to just think about making contributions to St. John's. It is what keeps our ministries going. It what, it's what makes allows us to do the work that we are called to do. So if you have not pledged, but you can offer, make an offering to St. John's, again, weekly, monthly, or yearly, however you want to do that, uh, we invite you to do that as well. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, 
and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your gift of Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be for the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. John and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. And let us go out into the world rejoicing the power of of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and do the good work that Jesus has called us to do. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.